Hello, I'm Kainz on the Tech Pro, and today's course will be Introduction to Databases for Beginners. It will be uh, Introduction to Databases for Beginners. Now, I want to make this course as simple as possible. Uh, if you are an amateur, if you don't have any knowledge of database before, if you are coming from a different field, an engineer, an accountant, uh, a, a lawyer or anything you are, you can easily follow this course. The difficulty level of this course is easy. So what you just need is your computer and uh, Microsoft Office. We will not go real deep into SQL and uh, very other, other difficult uh, concepts. So just stay with me and uh, you come back, we now take a few uh, uh, definition of the terms and then we go into the course proper. Alright, the two terms I want you to take note of is uh, uh, DBMS Yes, before we talk about DBMS, uh, let me tell you about databases in a very uh, short uh, sentence. A database is a collection of tables, a collection of one or more tables. And then we have database management system is an application used to manage databases. So if you have an application that can create more tables and then you're able to manage them effectively most likely that is a database management system. Now, why do we have a relational database management system, RDBMS? We have relational database management system, sorry, let me write it clearly, RDBMS. So we are adding R there. Relational database management system is, is, is simply database management system, but now it manages relational database. What is the difference between a database and a relational database? Well, way back in time, uh, people manage data by creating a very large table. For instance, we have a, a, a table containing millions of uh, records of, uh, of uh, uh, personnel data and then it have several tens or even hundreds of columns. For instance, we have first name, surname, other name, date of birth, marital status, nice of kin, phone number, email address, street, country, blah, blah, blah. Until we have several columns and then we have several uh, millions or even uh, more records. If we have such a table, of course, it, it can be a database, uh, a database, but it's not a relational database. It will be difficult to manage because you have a very large file uh, spanning several gigs, and that is a very big problem. Would there be a way to divide this file into uh, several parts and then relate them together so that the, the consistency of the information is not lost? And that is where we have relational database management system, where we have uh, not one table this time, but several tables that are related to each other. So what it means is in a school, we may have students table holding the records of students. We may have lecturers table. We may also have another table holding the departments. We have table holding the courses. So collection of all these tables make up a database for the school. So these tables are related. For instance, the, the the department's table is related to the lecturer's table because the lecturer belongs to a department. So that is just how uh, we have the world relational database management system. There are other times I want you to get used to. One of them is uh, of course, you know about rows and columns. Uh, it's easy to understand. Tables is made up of rows and columns. But in database terms, we don't use the word rows and columns. We use uh, uh, records. Records. And then we have fields. Okay, so records is the same as row. And a field is a column. 
So when you are working with a database, uh, you will not be saying that this, this table has uh, 20 rows. You'll be saying this table has or contains 20 records. That is the term we use and if you are learning database and database management systems, you will learn how to get used to the terms. So don't use rows and columns, uh, use fields and records. A row is a record, it means a row of data and then we have fields representing a particular kind of data. Okay, so if you have a first name column, for instance you have a serial number, we have first name so we have the first name field not the first name column is the first name field so get get used to that uh, the times uh, rows and columns should be replaced with fields and records another thing i want you to get used to is uh, a key a key is simply uh, a, a field in a particular record that identifies that field that record uniquely so if you have a record, let's just take for instance we have we have rational uh, representing the rate number, we have first name, uh, we have last name, and so on and so forth. We may have okay, let me let me use something very clear. We have S S N. So social security number might be the uh, the unique identifier that identifies this uh, individual uh, correctly. So this social security number is unique. No two persons can have the same social security number. And that makes it that the, the, the serial number field becomes a key. So the social security number is a key. A key defined as you can take a pen and a paper and write it down it's the field that uniquely identifies the particular record. A key is primary key uh, for that particular table if it is the key that uniquely identifies the record and belongs uh, primarily to that table. I'm going to explain clearly uh, after now when I explain uh, or talk about foreign keys. So let's take, let's take foreign key for example. A foreign key is a, a, a key in a table that is not the primary key. So if you have a, a social security number, first name, last name, and now you have, let's say, states ID, okay, uh, state ID. The reason you have state ID here is because the states are contained in another table uh, called uh, states. Remember, we are talking about a relational database. You are putting the states in a different table and putting the, 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 the personnel records in a different table. So the state ID belongs to another table. It means that if it appears here, it's a foreign key here. So it means that you have another table called states that have a primary key state ID. When we go to do the, the demonstration, we are going to be very, very clear on the difference between primary key and foreign key because that is what we are going to use to create the relationships uh, between the two tables. Another thing we are going to uh, take note of is relationship. A relationship is the is a interaction between two tables. So if you have uh, states as a table containing all the states in the country, and you have uh, uh, persons containing everybody, then you need to relate the two uh, tables together. And that is where relationships come in. So these states here will have a primary key. It will have a primary key uh, that identifies each record. And that primary key is state ID. But then we are adding state ID here uh, to show that this guy here comes from a particular state. We are not listing that state and the mayor or, or, or whatever data about the state remains in the state table. We are trying to say that this guy here uh, has this record comes from a state. So the state ID is what we use here to relate the two tables. We are going to get uh, more uh, clear on that as we move along. Another time I want us to understand this constraint. 
anytime you are talking about a database, you talk about constraints. Constraints, a uh, very important term. I don't know, constraint. I think I got it. Okay. So, constraint is a restriction you place on the data that will be in the database. So, what it means is that if you have a, a first name uh, field, okay, it means that this first name field, one constraint is nobody should enter a number there because a uh, first name cannot be a number. So a constraint is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a, a restriction you place on the data that will be in a particular part of the database. For instance, you can have age. You can have age. And then you say the age has to be between 1 and 100. So if somebody tries to enter something more than 100 or below 1, there, then it's not going to work because there has been a constraint placed there. So uh, these are the few terms you need to know. Uh, there are many other terms, but we are trying to keep it simple. Remember, we discussed about uh, uh, records and fields. Uh, instead of using rows and columns, use records and fields. And instead of using a, um, you have a primary key and you also have foreign key. Then we also talk about relationships. Then we also talk about constraints. Okay, so. The next thing we are going to discuss now is uh, uh, database management systems. So I'm going to be very brief. Uh, we say database management systems is an application used to manage a database. A database is made up of tables. So what application do you know that you use to create a number of tables? Microsoft Excel. Uh, Microsoft Excel is the easiest database management system to use, although they say it's a spreadsheet application. Uh, but in the real sense, in the world of database, we view it as a database management system. Microsoft has developed Microsoft Access simply to, 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 to have uh, a, a completely different, complex or more comprehensive system to manage a database. So Microsoft Excel is okay, but we are not going to be using it. We are going to use Microsoft Access because that is what Microsoft say is used to manage relational database. So, and then in the demo that is going to follow, in the hands-on, I, 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 I say uh, you try to follow along carefully, it's very easy. You will really learn how databases work.